Hey y'all, welcome back to Let's Code. I'm Chris Biscardi, and today we're gonna cover uh, Rayon, actually a little bit. So we've been working on these nano sketches for our creative coding for a little bit now. And in the last video, we created this Herlin Noise 2D representation that's got our cloud noise that has grayscale and color and all these other things, uh, which is wonderful. So what I went ahead and did is I took it and went 3D with it. So I'm not gonna do a full video on 3D Perlin noise, but I will play it here for you. So I'll make this nice and small, and you can see that the frame rate is about 30 frames per second. It's not great, um, but it was a little bit of work to even get here. So you can see that as I scale this up, um, the noise doesn't change, but the amount of noise that we are seeing change, and you can see the frame rate drop the bigger it gets. So the big problem here is that when it was basically full screen, the frame rate starts to drop down to like four or five frames a second. Now, it still is about like four or five frames a second, but it's better than it was. And it's better than it was because I used Rayon. And to figure out what was wrong, I wrote a benchmark. So in this Perlin Noise benchmark uh, crate inside of my Nanu Creative Coding workspace, we've got a Cargo Toml with Criterion installed and a special benchmark called my benchmark. And we turn the test harness off. Basically, usually when you run cargo test or something like that, there is a test harness that Rust has by default. And in this case, we're gonna write a benchmark. So we don't really want that test harness. We're gonna use Criterion's test harness. So in this case, we import a bunch of things and I've basically taken the uh, most poignant pieces of the Perlin Noise 3D uh, example and pulled it into this benchmark test. So it's extremely real world, right? So we've got basically this dynamic image that I created at the top, which is some size. We map over a set of points and then we construct the dynamic image and we re uh, return it, which is exactly what we're doing in the Perlin Noise 3D. It's a little bit more complicated in the 3D example uh, because there's a little bit more code to deal with colors and things like that. But in the benchmark, we are just doing grayscale and we are just focused on how much time does it take us to actually get the noise values out. So the first thing I'm going to do is check out the old uh, code that I had here. So this is the original code that I ran in the uh, Perlin Noise 3D example. We've got a dynamic image with some size. We have four X, Y in points. Points is a vec or a slice in this case of uh, tuples. So X, Y positions. And then we get the noise. So we're getting the noise using X over 500 and Y over 500. In this case, it's a 2D uh, Perlin noise, but could easily be 3D. It doesn't particularly matter. I was really just looking to test uh, how fast we could get the noise out. And then we map the uh, value that we get out of the noise, which is going to be from negative 1 to 1 into the range 0 to 255. We cast it to a U8, and then we put it into the pixel buffer for the image. So very practical, very what we would expect to use in our uh, Nanu example. And I pulled this out into a benchmark so that it would be easier to focus in on just the pieces that were relevant, right? So I don't have to run all of Nanu. I don't have to spin up the window. I don't have to try to additionally benchmark the GPU rendering or something like that. So we've got two benchmarks here. Uh, and benchmarks are run basically the same way as regular functions are written. Each of these benchmarks takes a mutable reference to a criterion. At the bottom here, we have a couple of macros basically setting up, hey, here are our benchmarks. Our first, our, both of these are exactly the same with a different uh, pixel setup. So in the first case, we create a new basic multi set of noise. This is six octaves of Perlin noise. So that means that the Perlin algorithm gets called six times with different settings, and those all get combined in a specific algorithm. and that's the value that we get out. So for something like a 1920 by 1080 screen, if we do 19, 1920 times 1080, that gives me about 2,073,000 uh, 2, uh, when it comes down to how many pixels we have to push per scene or per frame. This very uh, clearly gets to be a problem if we look at 4K because 4K brings it up to 8,300,000, which is a lot, right? So you can see why we get decent frame rates when it's smaller and as we get bigger into a 4K screen, uh, our frame rate starts to suffer because we're doing 8 million 
gets of the Perlin noise algorithm every frame. So all we're doing here is setting up the points like we do in our Perlin noise examples. This is uh, 0 to 1920 as a range and 0 to 1080 as a range. Uh, we use a Cartesian product on them to get basically all of the x's combined with all of the y's. And we collect that into a VEC of tuples. This is all done before the benchmark runs. So the function that we're benching, we wrap in bench function. We give it a name and it gets basically an argument that we can use to uh, execute, right? So this is going to execute our get noise function that we defined above a large number of times. It's going to keep track of a number of different um metrics as it's doing that and it will give us that data back uh in this case we use black box around all of our arguments to make sure that they aren't being like memoized or optimized by the rest compiler to uh in the case of benchmark specifically you want to make sure that your arguments aren't being optimized away by the compiler you want to make sure they're still here even though we technically like may not be really using them and then this get noise function will get called with these arguments a number of times and we'll get back all of our statistics at the end. So if we run this with cargo bench, this will run for a little while. It'll run first the 1920 by 1080 and then it will run the 4K test. This is because we don't want the two tests to interfere with each other in any way. So it's nice to have when we're benchmarking anyway, isolation between uh, the CPU resource usage and things like that. So in this case, it says performance has regressed because the last benchmark that I ran was the optimized code. So you can see how much worse this actually is. It's 500% worse in basically both cases. In the 1920 by 1080, it takes us about 217 milliseconds to render a single frame's worth of noise or to, to generate a single frame's worth of noise. Uh, so we're gonna treat that as a lower bound on our practical application for the Perlin noise uh, three-dimensional example and say that it takes at least 200 milliseconds to render a single frame using the old code. And then you can see that as we get up to 4K, it gets a lot worse because, you know, we have a lot more pixels to render. So we're taking almost 900 milliseconds here, which is really bad. And let me show you this code a little bit before we actually get into what I changed. Um, really, what you're going to notice here is that we are synchronously iterating over all of the points one at a time. We are getting the noise from uh, each of those points, and then we're putting that into the image. So if I pull main back in, you can see what changed over here. And we leave the dynamic image alone. The points that, uh, the iteration over the points turns into par iter, and par iter comes from rayon iter up here with the into parallel ref iter and parallel iterator traits. So as soon as we install rayon and we bring these traits in, we get par iter into par iter and I think one other function just directly on basically things we can iterate over, which is wonderful because what this does is automatically parallelizes um, the processing of these points. So we par iter and we map over that inside of this map, which is happening in parallel, we are getting the noise. So all of this noise getting is happening inside of parallel streams of work, basically. And then we collect that and we return it. So we are creating an additional VEC here, I believe. Um, I'm not too concerned about that. We'll see why in a minute. But if you've ever needed to iterate over something and you need to speed that computation up and there's not much you can do to the actual computation you're doing, right? Like we can't make noise.get faster. And actually I haven't even benchmarked how, how fast that is on its own. So I could definitely do that and see what our lower bound on speed here would be. Um, but if we can't optimize the noise.get because we can't, well, we could rewrite the crate, right? But we don't really want to rewrite the crate. We want to modify the way we're using the crate to be as fast as possible. And if we want to do that, then we can use par iter, or maybe you have just like, you know, a segment of work that you can't optimize for some reason or don't want to. Um, then we can use par iter to just simply, or maybe not simply, but with quite a little bit of effort comparatively to other approaches get some parallelization out of our iterator. So this iterator for points will just start producing and Rayon will start throwing that at our parallelized processing so that this noise gets, you know, processed in parallel. And then we collect that into a VEC. And then this, uh, we currently have as serial. So we get the mutable reference to the buffer. 
for each of the pixels and then we put it in and then we let the next pixel put itself in. So all of the pixel pushing is still serialized, but all of the noise generation has been parallelized. And that was done fairly simply with Rayon, which is wonderful. Rayon's a wonderful library. So if we run Cargo Bench again, this is also going to take some time. But look at how much faster that was. So in our first example, we had a cargo bench of something like 200. Let's see if we can get back up to it. Yeah, so 217 and 880. And now we're at 40 and 150. So you can see that we've improved by the same amount in each case, um, which is wonderful. And now rendering a frame of 4K data takes us at minimum uh, 150 seconds, which is even faster than the 1080 uh, resolution on our original bit of code. So the optimized code with Rayon and par iter runs significantly faster, which is wonderful. So this is great, but you can still see kind of how slow it's actually moving. And personally, I have some guesses as to why this actually is. I think we're not probably using as much of the CPU as we could, but we are getting like a noticeable frame progression at 4k resolution, which is fairly large. Now, there is a narrative here that I do want to do, uh, continue a little bit. We have improved the actual performance of our 3D Perlin noise uh, example here, but the way we did that was just by parallelizing the production of the noise. And if you start doing more research into creative coding, you find out that effectively what we have here is an algorithm that is really good for shaders, right? A Perlin noise algorithm allows us to get a value out of any XY point or XYZ point in this case, anywhere along the Perlin noise. So each pixel itself could calculate its own Perlin noise value on every frame. And that's exactly what shaders are meant to do. So if we continue down this path and we try to parallelize more and more, it may behoove us to actually move into writing this in a shader and maybe we'll get even better performance out of that. Now, Writing it in Rust uh, has made it so that we can do uh, 8 million noise operations every frame, and we can do a number of those per second, as we can see here, which is already amazing. But if we wanted to do, say, this, and then do something on top of this, or for some reason we wanted to render it an even larger resolution, like 8K or something like that. And this is like, this is true 4K, I also want to mention, because a lot of the p5 and processing examples that i've seen uh scale up from a lower pixel count and that's wonderful it's a great way to gain some additional performance but we can also just do 4k so that's really nice and i think that in the future um one of the things that i'll look into because i don't think that nanu supports glsl shaders i think nanu only supports wsgl if i remember correctly so I think that for productionizing this particular example, I may try to write it as a shader and put it into Bevy because Bevy has support for GLSL and not just GLSL, but also compute shaders and other uh, advanced things like that, such as collision detection and other interesting uh, applications. So that's it for today. Just a little bit of, hey, if you have a parallelizable problem, you should probably do your work in parallel. Rayon is a really easy way to do that once you're familiar with iterators and Rust, and you should go take a look at it. So I'll catch you in the next video.